Hey guys, welcome to the Code with Nate channel. Today we're going to go quickly over how to add HTTPS to your Amazon S3 static website. Um, if you haven't deployed your front end to um, AWS S3 yet, I recommend checking out the video we did on that a couple months ago. Uh, there's a link in the description. It uh, applies to not only React apps, but any front end app that you might um, build and deploy um, independently of the back end. So take a look at that if you haven't already. Uh, it's a pretty good video. If you do have an S3 hosted static website already, you are in the right place. So what we're going to do is set up a CloudFront distribution so that our front end is distributed over a CDN. Uh, so that it's highly available and really fast to uh, load for our users. And then we are going to um, attach a certificate to that so that all traffic going to our website is encrypted using HTTPS. Uh, and that's going to really um, tighten up security for our clients so we don't have to worry so much about man-in-the-middle attacks and um, other security vulnerabilities that come with using regular HTTP with no encryption. Um, so I'm going to switch over to the desktop view here and let's get started. Um, so I've got this website hosted on S3 right now and it's called myudemia.com. Uh, it does not have SSL set up, no HTTPS. Uh, however, in the previous video we shot, we added HTTPS for its API. Uh, and that's important because you can't have a front end uh, hosted with HTTPS. You're not allowed to make insecure requests, so HTTP requests in the back end uh, to any APIs, um, and it uh, and your browser will recognize that you're doing those insecure requests and tell the user that you're an insecure website. So you need to make sure you do all your APIs in HTTPS first, and we go over how to do that in the previous video. Now to do it for our um, for our website, we need to first jump into AWS and go to the Certificate Manager. And in order to import a certificate, uh, so the certificate is going to tell um, users that we are a trusted uh, source for myademia.com. So it's really important that this is done well and. AWS lets us create these certificates for free, which is really cool. Um, so we need to create a certificate with the domain name of myademia.com. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Uh, it's important that you do this at the time of this video, at least in the North Virginia region. Uh, let me just show you. I'm going to, let's see here. Um, my emails. So North Virginia is important here because you can't import um, a certificate manager, an AWS certificate, into CloudFront at the time of this video uh, from any other region, I believe. I think there might be one other region. So make sure you create your certificate in North Virginia, and that's important. Uh, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to click on this Request a Certificate button. So the domain name that we want to create the certificate for is myudemia.com. We don't need to add another name to this certificate. If you did have another domain name um, that you wanted on the certificate, you could add that. Um, I'm not sure of the use case of having one certificate for multiple domains yet. Um, so far, I've been creating one certificate for each domain that I add. Uh, okay, so next. Uh, you're going to need to validate that you own that domain in order for the certificate to work. So we're going to select validation method here. DNS validation is fine. We have our DNS set up in Route 53 in AWS. You might not, uh, and that's okay. You just need to add some records in whatever, uh, wherever those are hosted. Um, so let's click review. And yep, pretty simple. Domain name myudemia.com. We want to add a an SSL certificate for that so we can confirm and request that. Now down here, uh, we can see that the request is in progress and it's pending validation. Uh, and that is pending validation because we need to add this record to DNS. So I am going to go ahead and open up a new AWS tab. And if you see, we need to set a CNAME record 
with this name to with this value. So let's go ahead, let's copy this name, Command C, and head over to Route 53. Actually, uh, looks like for us we have a button here that will create this record for us. I'm not going to do this for the purposes of this tutorial in case someone has their DNS hosted elsewhere. Um, so let's just go ahead and do this manually. But if you're on AWS and you have this um, domain name hosted in AWS, you can go ahead and just click this button and I think it does everything for you. That might be a new feature or something I've overlooked before, but that's cool. Uh, so we're going to head over to Route 53. And we will go to our hosted zones here and go into myudemia.com, which is our domain name. And we just need to go ahead and create a record set here. We copied the name. Uh, I'm going to copy this into the URL bar here. Oh, that's not it. Uh, we need to go and, let's see, Command C, did that work? No, okay. Well, need to copy this into the clipboard. There it is. Okay, and you can see when we're creating a record set over here, it's whatever the name is, and then myudemia.com right here. So we want to copy everything to the left of myudemia.com in this name uh, that they gave us in the certificate manager for our DNS record. So that then, and maybe we don't need the dot there. I'm not sure if we need it. Yeah, maybe get rid of the dot as well. So that's the name, and it wants to be a C name. So we're going to set that to C name. Also, we need to grab this value now and uh, trim off this extra. I thought there was an extra space. Did we get this right? I guess we got it. Dot AWS. So this is the value that's going to be plugged in there, and we're going to add that. After that, click create. Our record is now in there, and uh, you can see there's also the record for the API. Uh, so now it's going to take a minute to verify um, that, that this is our domain. So we're going to just go ahead and go to the next step, which is setting up the CloudFront distribution. So I've got CloudFront open here, and we're going to go ahead and click Create Distribution. Um, that's this blue button right here. Click on Get Started because we want to create a web distribution. We want our website to be uh, distributed via CDN with HTTPS. Let's click Get Started. The origin domain name is going to be myudemia.com. This is our S3 bucket here. Um, that should auto-populate for you. Um, if you've got your website hosted in S3, which is what this tutorial is for. The origin path, we're going to leave blank. Um, let's just skip past. Most of these settings are going to be fine originally for you. Um, let's see here. Restricted bucket access. No. Maybe. What is this? Always access here using CloudFront URLs. Yeah. I think we do want to restrict bucket access. Let's do that. That way, users can't access our bucket unless they go through HTTPS. Um, let's see, origin access identity. What is that? Hmm. Access identity. I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, you know what, for now, maybe we won't restrict the bucket access. Just to keep things simple for this tutorial, if you guys wanted to harden your security like that, you could. Uh, okay, so this one, so we want all our traffic on myademia.com to go to HTT, or HTTPS. So we're going to go ahead and click redirect HTTP to HTTPS. Uh, for this website, the API has all these um, HTTP methods, but as far as getting the assets goes, I only call um, git and head. Um, because it's a static website. Uh, what else? Field level encryption config, no. Um, cache by default, I keep going here. Object caching, 
So another thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to lower the TTL for the caching of our resources here. And that's just because sometimes it's, um, sometimes you mess up things and you don't want to have to wait forever for a cache to bust. Um, and that is why I set TTLs for things like this pretty low at first, especially while I'm iterating over um, the infrastructure while I'm still setting things up. Okay. Um, everything else looks fine here. We are going to use all edge locations for best performance. That means it's going to work worldwide. Uh, you can also choose to just do this in US, Canada, and Europe. I think it's cheaper, but I think CloudFront is cheap um, by itself. Uh oh, my mouse is dying. Better do this before the mouse dies, huh? Uh, battery level 2%, great. Um, what else do we have here? Um, the default root object, I think. Yeah. So this would be index.html in our case. Um, that's going to be the root object for a lot of websites hosted in S3. Probably if you have a different root object, uh, and that is the first page a user is going to hit when they hit your domain name, uh, you're going to want to change that here. Um, and I think that should do it. The only other thing is we need to import our uh, certificate. And that's right here. Uh, so we can see that our certificate's been verified now, probably, um, because it shows up here. So you just hit refresh here, and your certificate will be here. And we click Create Distribution. And now this bit takes a little bit of um, time, usually, because this is distributing your website through CDN. Uh, to all a bunch of different uh, data centers. Um, just go ahead and see that. Yeah, this is going to be validated already. So you see how this is in progress now. Um, I'm not quite sure how long this is going to take. Uh, hopefully it won't take too long. Um, but while we're waiting for this to distribute, there is a pro tip uh, when deploying S3 apps through CloudFront in that uh, if you want to do URL rewriting, uh, it's a little tricky. But if you, yeah, it's a little tricky, but there's a way to do it if you use CloudFront. You can't do this if it's only hosted in S3. Uh, so this is important and it's cool to watch. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is in this error pages uh, tab here in our distribution, we can add uh, 403. So if if we don't find um, if we don't find a page, so say if we're on our website right now, and we go myademiacom slash UNLV professors. Um, like this. If it can't find the page for whatever reason, um, let's see if we can demo this. Well, it seems to be working now, but if it can't find the page, basically what's going to happen is uh, you're going to get a 404 from AWS. But what we really want to do is redirect it to our index.html page so that we handle the errors ourselves in our front end uh, website um, code. So you do that in your um, custom error response settings in the CloudFront distribution. Um, so uh, once again, I'm going to lower the caching time. And uh, the custom error response page is going to be index.html and 200. So now if our user lands on a page, so right now if we just went you know, ASDF, ASDF, we're going to get nothing. Um, because, and if we look at inspect the network tab here, 
we get this 404 here, and it says you need to enable JavaScript to run this app. We get a 404, it's useless, and that is coming back from S3. But what we want it to do is redirect to either our own 404 page or to index.html for us to handle um, or, or just to redirect to our main site if, they accidentally, if a user accidentally hits a route that doesn't exist instead of seeing this 404 from S3. So that, this is going to go ahead and do that. So if we get a 404 now, we are going to redirect the user to index.html and give it a response code of 200. Yeah, and we've got to start with a leading slash here. Okay, so we've got our custom error behavior. Let's see what else we have in here while we're waiting for this to deploy. Yeah, it's still in progress if you take a look. We can go take a look at this domain name now and see. So this is the CloudFront domain name. Yeah, see, it's not quite out yet. Uh, so we're going to have to keep giving it a little more time. Um, maybe I should charge my mouse. Nah. I'll just use the trackpad for now, guys. Well, I hope this tutorial has been uh, useful to you guys. While we're waiting, I just want to thank you guys for watching the channel. Uh, I appreciate the viewership, and uh, it really is fun doing these videos with you guys and for you guys. Um, I'm glad. So far, we've gotten to cover a lot of topics, and it's been really cool. Um, so thanks again for viewing, guys. If you do like the content, uh, please subscribe, because I'm going to keep pumping these videos out, and uh, we're going to learn to do some cool things together. Um, if you have any other feedback or any feedback at all, uh, I'd love to hear that in the comments. Uh, it's always appreciated. It helps me refine the videos so that they're better for you. And um, another thing you could do is offer suggestions of videos to make. Uh, so far, we've made every user suggestion. Uh, any any user that's come and suggested a video, uh, we've made it. Uh, made a video based on that content. And uh, it's been really cool doing some ones that uh, kind of took me out of my comfort zone. Uh, for instance, we did a, a video on tuning PHP FPM deployed in Docker. And that's something that, you know, I would never do if I wasn't asked to do it. You know, I wouldn't do it for myself. I'm, I don't usually use PHP FPM for things. Um, and certainly don't tune it if I do use it. Uh, so that was really fun. It was fun to step out of the comfort zone and make a video on that. So thanks. Louise for that suggestion. Um, man, it does take a while for this distribution. It's got to work though, guys. Um, so I think we may just have to end this video without seeing the final result. And that is just because it takes so long to distribute um, the website over CloudFront, unfortunately. We got all the configuration right. Um, I've done this before, uh, tested it out, and it, uh, it's gonna work for you guys. If uh, for some reason you have any problems at all following the steps in the video, or um, something's not clear, or for any reason your website's not loading with HTTPS as soon as this status um, reaches deployed for your CloudFront distribution, let me know in a comment and I'll make sure to respond. Usually I respond within 24 hours, uh, sometimes within an hour, um, but I will make sure to respond to your comment and make sure that you get your website deployed with HTTPS um, because it's a huge security boost and really great for your users and great for the world to use HTTPS. It's a little grandiose, but whatever. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I always appreciate the viewership. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.